Okay, let's talk about the calculator that killed slide rolls. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an actual example of an original TI-30. The closest thing I have is this TI-SR-40. Uh, the SR-40 and the TI-30, the calculator that killed slide rolls, um, were both introduced in 1976. Um, the SR-40 is kind of an upscale TI-30. Uh, compared to the TI-30, there's basically two differences. Uh, the SR-40 has keys with actual uh, printing on them, or actually I think that somehow the uh, the lettering there is molded into the key. Um, whereas the TI-30 has uh, the description of the function above the key and the keys themselves are blank. It's kind of a cheaper keyboard. Uh, the other difference is that the SR-40 uh, has a different battery system than the TI-30. The TI-30 uh, uh, this doesn't uh, use the disposable 9 volts, I think. Uh, and the SR-40 comes with the rechargeable battery pack. Um, although I have a I have a disposable nine volt in this SR40 because the battery packs are hard to uh, to find in good condition or rehabilitate. Um, anyway, so the two differences are the, the battery pack and the the keyboard, the functionality, the key layout, everything else is exactly the same between the SR40 and the original TI30 introduced in 1976. Uh, here's a later TI30 SLR. Uh, this is uh, made in Japan, um, although later uh, TI30 SLRs are made in Taiwan. Um, this uh, represents an, uh, an 80s version of the TI-30. Uh, the TI-30 is still produced. I think the version you can get these days is the TI-30XA something something. Um, kind of a descendant of the TI-30. Um, it still has a one line screen. Um, there are other TI calculators called the TI-30 with multi-line screens. Um, I don't really consider those real descendants of the TI-30 except in name. Um, Okay, so, it's 1976, the TI-30 comes out, what, um, why does it kill slide rolls? Well, up until the TI-30 comes out, um, if you need to compute transcendental functions, these are uh, functions like sine, cosine, trigonometry, uh, logarithms, um, arbitrary exponents, um, you've got two options. You can spend a lot of money on a calculator. Um, since the um, HP 35 is released. I have a video, HP 35 versus slide roll. Um, uh, calculators have come down a lot in price. Even the HP 35 has come down, come down in price. I'm not sure if the HP 35 is still available in 1976, but HP calculators have come down in price. Um, TI calculators have come onto the scene at a lower price point than HP. Um, kind of reduced quality, but tried to match um, specifications. Uh, so TI is kind of the bargain competitor uh, to HP in the market. Um, but the TI-30, um, the cheaper version of this SR-40, um, is finally cheap enough where it's cheaper than the typical um, slide rolls you can get. Um, and so why would you buy a slide roll? Uh, so that's the argument for why the TI-30 finally kills the slide roll off. Um, before that, you could get a four-function calculator you know, fairly cheap, uh, but not a full-fledged scientific calculator that can do the transcendental functions. Um, well, let's turn this on. I'm not sure how well you can see. Uh, the TI-30, unlike the HP-35, uh, has its screen at an angle, so it's kind of hard to read unless I hold the calculator like this. Um, the HP-35 screen is much nicer. Again, TI is the bargain competitor, uh, much cheaper construction. The screen's not quite as nice. Um, the TI-30 is it's only got eight digits uh, that you can see, which means um, not only are there only eight digits, significant digits that you could read, but if it uh, needs to switch to scientific notation, you can only read uh, five digits because uh, it, it puts five and then a space and then a two-digit exponent. Uh, so compare this number to the uh, number I got on the HP-35 video. Um, okay, uh, the HP-35, it will still show eight significant digits plus a two-digit exponent. Um, but five significant figures is more than enough for most applications and is better than you will get on most slide rolls. Uh, you can see the calculator has gone into power save mode. It's got a little running light across there. Um, does that just to save battery. 
Uh, let's see, let's exchange. Um, of course, calculator technology advances rapidly, and um, here this TI-30 already can stay on the whole time. No batteries required for the solar calculator. Screen is much nicer, very high contrast. Um, but you can see, just looking at the keyboards, that the functionality of both of these, the original TI-30 um, and this later 80s TI-30 solar, uh, basically the same. Um, so what makes the TI-30, um, I was going to say scale set, what makes the TI-30 feature set um, kind of a knocking the ball out of the park moment for, t for TI? Um, well, first we already mentioned it's cheap. Uh, cheap enough to buy instead of a slide roll. Um, it's portable. Um, batteries, even though they're expensive, you can find 9 volts fairly easily at the time. Much, they're much more common than they are now. Um, so you, you have cheap, point one. Point two, it computes the basic transcendental functions. Uh, you'll notice there's no hyperbolic functions here. Uh, so it has kind of a basic transcendental function scale set. Um, so cheap, basic transcendental functions, and the third is that it has TI's Algebra Operating System, or AOS, um, which is its method for entering more complex expressions. And it has not only the basic version that appears on the earlier TI calculators, it has the version with parentheses. So the parentheses version of the AOS um, debuts on some of TI's more expensive calculators a year or two earlier, but finally is brought to their bargain calculator line uh, with the TI-30. Uh, what this allows you to do is, uh, say you want to compute, oops, it really goes into that power save mode aggressively, uh, say you want to compute uh, 3 to the 1 fifth power, I can hit 3, um, then exponent, parenthesis, 1 divided by 5, close parenthesis, enter, and that should be 3 to the 1 fifth power. Um, Okay, so it allows you to compute complex things that you cannot compute with the basic AOS without parentheses, um, and it finally kind of competes with TI's uh, RPN entry system. Um, okay, uh, I found that still students find, uh, t or today students find these sorts of calculators a little hard to use because they didn't grow up with them. Uh, so the way that functions work, uh, that you type in the number, then you press a function, uh, is a little foreign to students who, who grew up on today's computers and calculators. Um, okay, but at the time it's easy to use. Some argue it's, it was easier than HP's RPN. Some argue HP's RPN system is more natural. Um, let's not get into that in this video. Um, but in any case, it, it allows you to compute complex expressions. It computes the basic transcendental functions. And it's just a very successful calculator line for TI. What is it missing versus more uh, fancier calculators, more expensive calculators uh, from 1976. Well, we said no hyperbolic functions. Um, there's also no statistics functions. So the HP 45, uh, released I think in 1973, um, improves the HP 35 by introducing some statistics functions. Um, TI um, introduces them on its calculators. We're talking, you know, compute the mean, standard deviation, um, these sorts of basic stats functions. Uh, later TI adds those to the TI 30. Uh, but for a while, the TI-30 kind of is TI's calculator that doesn't have those stats functions. It has one memory register, uh, which you could use to to try to do those things, but it would be a pain. Um, okay, and it's also lacking uh, programming features. So the HP, I think, 55 um, and 65 and some TI calculators already out at this time um, have programmability, so you can type a program into them, you can run the program, um, you can so you can kind of extend what your calculator can do. Um, those are those are missing on the TI-30, um, but it's a knockout combination: cheap, transcendental functions, uh, algebra operating system, ease of use, and this is the calculator that kills the slide roll.